and let me find the unmute button. Hi everyone, my name is Eric Teutsch. Uh, I'm Principal Solution Engineer uh, here at Tableau. Um, and I'm here today to spend some time talking about what's new in Tableau for the 2020.3 release. And then after that, we'll do a quick recap of the recently concluded Tableau conference uh, known affectionately as TC20-ish. Uh, and point you to some resources that I think you'll find both helpful and interesting. As a reminder, uh, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature of the WebEx uh, as opposed to the chat feature. Um, several of my colleagues, colleagues are actually on the line and will field questions. And then uh, if there are any that, uh, that uh, seem to be relevant and we have time at the end, um, we'll try and field a few of them toward the end of the presentation as well. So with that, let's go. So for those of you who've watched Tableau's release cadence, uh, especially since we moved to this quarterly cadence uh, a few years ago, 2020.3 uh, will look like a fairly typical release. Uh, and typical in that we've rolled out a lot of new things, we've tweaked a few other things, and we've generally given Tableau even more of that sort of analytic goodness that you expect from us. This time around, we've added some improvements to the relationships feature, uh, enhancements to calculations. We've continued to enhance the web authoring experience in Tableau Server. Just lots of really useful stuff. So some of that, of course, demos pretty well. Uh, other things like uh, really powerful grant license on sign-in or improvements to Tableau Bridge, maybe those don't, don't demo quite so much. So, with your permission, I will spend a few minutes here in PowerPoint, and then uh, we can have a live look at some of the new features. So first of all, uh, we've made a big push over the last few years uh, with Tableau's spatial capabilities, the ability to generate maps and work with spatial data. 2020.3 takes this a step further. and. For those of you who use local shape files generated by tools like Esri, Tableau will now allow you to union those files and treat them as a big single data source. Uh, we doing okay for audio there? We are, yeah. Okay, good. I was seeing things flash up on the screen there. So um, now in 2020.2, we saw the release of the first cut at our new relationships data modeling features. And really powerful, if you haven't gotten into that, uh, please dig into some of the resources about it. I think it's you know, really a game changer. Uh, and in 2020.3, we've enhanced that a bit by adding uh, join calculations. This is a feature that'll be available for, that's been available for years uh, in our old jo uh, joins dialog, which by the way, you can still do. You're not locked into doing relationships, uh, but now we've actually made relationships a little more powerful and uh, it's designed really just to help you get more done. So desktop predictive modeling functions, um, so a couple of years ago, Tableau acquired a company called Empirical Systems, who'd built this powerful augmented analytics and machine learning engine. Um, and the first place you actually saw that in Tableau was with the explain data feature, which we rolled out in 2019.3. Now, since then, we've worked hard to extend the power of this engine. And here in 2020.3, we're exposing two new predictive functions model quantile and model percentile. Uh, these are elegant and easy to understand calculations. Uh, this is a calculation, uh, this, this, this calculation that you see here is actually pre, uh, creating a predictive algorithm for sales based on quantity, discount, segment, and region. And we'll take a little bit deeper look at that uh, live in Tableau Desktop and just show you how that kind of works. Parameter actions, uh, also another really powerful thing that we've introduced over the last few years. I find them particularly awesome. Um, but as initially rolled out, it was, uh, it was actually one of those things that I found to be a little bit of a miss uh, in that there was no provision for like setting what would happen if a value was actually deselected. It would just basically the parameter value would stay at whatever was was there. So. At 2020.3, you can actually now set a 
default behavior for that. And for customers who have uh, the, the new data management add-on, we've actually extended the reach of data quality warnings to further ensure that you've got good governance and good communication around the quality of data sources. So now any Tableau desktop user who's connected to a published data source, uh, either to create new workbooks or to modify existing workbooks, they'll be, a, they'll be aware right there in the desktop interface of any issues with their data. If there are any data quality warnings on the connections in the workbooks, these warnings will just now pop up and you'll kind of see them, you can see it right here um, in, the, in the view where you'll actually get an indicator that there's something going on and you can investigate further. I gotta say, who doesn't like a good case statement, right? Um, I once built a case statement that was multiple hundreds of lines long, uh, where I was basically doing kind of like a, a basically a t this text parsing sort of thing. Um, this feature would have helped me immensely in that. Um, it's just for anybody who does a lot of text parsing and things like that, this is, this is really, really cool, uh, a really nice little shortcut. Um, so you're welcome for all of those people who like to do uh, big text analysis stuff. Now, I love Tableau, of course, but you know, after doing upgrade after upgrade after upgrade over you know the nine years that I've been at Tableau, this is driven me crazy, right? You get this shiny new version of Tableau, and all of a sudden, everything that I've used, uh, everything that I've done for the last couple of months, is just magically gone from the home screen. And, you know, it's not that it's not there under recents or something like that, but I like having them there where I can just click on them. Um, all I can say is that I actually upgraded to, uh, I upgraded yesterday and I've got all of the workbooks that, I'm, that I've been working on the last couple of weeks uh, right there. And just, you know, it's just a much nicer experience, I think. So for those of you who missed it, dynamic parameters were released a few versions back, and those are pretty darn cool. It's the ability to populate a parameter based on a, uh, a field in your database. And those are refreshed anytime you either open a workbook in Tableau Desktop or open it on server. What we've done in 2020.3 is actually allowed you to use either F5 on desktop or the refresh button uh, up on the menu bar in Tableau Online or in Tableau Server. So same feature, just a little easier to get at and a little bit more dynamic for, uh, for those of you who have data that's changing that might need to update those parameters. So this is one of those things that, especially in big active enterprises, can be, a, can be an issue. Um, data loads happen and extract refreshes happen um, kind of when they happen. And they, you know, you might know that it's going to happen sometime Monday morning or whatever. Uh, but it oftentimes it ends up leading to a little bit of guessing. It's like, when is that extract going to refresh so that I can subscribe to it so I can get the freshest data? Well, again, uh, no more guessing in this one. Uh, as of 2020.3, we've actually allowed you to either choose to subscribe on a schedule or to trigger that subscription based on uh, when an extract refresh completes. So um, right now this is limited to a single extract, but it's really powerful and I would look to that being extended uh, off in the future. So ask data again, another one of those things, natural language processing, the ability to build visualizations by typing questions. Uh, which is great as far as it goes, uh, but oftentimes it, uh, you end up with these suggested questions that sound like database jargon, right? So sum of discount or, um, you know, group by something or the other, right? Um, what we've done in 2020.3 is allowed users to, or allowed site admins and server admins to modify, and it's, again, it's clicking this little kind of this little pencil button here. And you can actually add the, the common vernacular of your organization to it. So you could change sum of discounts to total discounting or something along those lines. Really handy feature for 
just helping the users who might be looking at ask data to further understand uh, what they need to you know where they um, what, what the right question is excuse me for a moment so again uh, to foster more community and more sharing and more communication around Tableau uh, or around visualizations and data communication. Uh, we've added this new shared with me feature. So we've been able to share, uh, share workbooks and dashboards and things like that from within Tableau server for a while now. Uh, but what happened is that if I decided to share something with uh, my teammate Bree or somebody, uh, she would get an email that I shared it to her and it would just land in her inbox and she might or might not actually look at it. Um, or, But then maybe a week or two later, she thinks, oh, I needed to check that out. And now all of a sudden she has to dig through an inbox to find the email that I sent her. Um, what we've done here is, a, I, again, I think it's just a really elegant way of surfacing that content back to the user who needs it where you kind of need it. And that's with this little shared with me feature. We'll take a look at that again uh, down the line, but it's a really nice way to go in and just collect anything that's been shared with you. And this will have this nice history for you. Um, and it's right there from your home screen. So license management for you server and site admins has been pretty darned onerous. Uh, as a task, but now what we've done with this grant license on sign-in is allow any admin to specify that, you know, by by group, uh, like, so this business operation groups, anybody from that business operations group, when they log in, they are automatically an explorer or automatically a creator or automatically a viewer, whatever, whatever, whatever role you've decided. So it makes the management of the users in these and different roles and permissions just much easier to deal with uh, from that perspective, especially for those who have really large environments. So all dashboards, of course, have a life cycle. It's sort of this circle of life thing, right? They're born, they come to be wildly popular in your organization, uh, they help people meet their goals, and then people eventually start to pay attention to that shiny new dashboard and they forget about the old ones. So if you've got extracts in those dashboards, um, those are still running, right? They kind of become zombies out there. Nobody's actually looking at the dashboard anymore and they're still out there consuming CPU cycles and consuming resources. Um, and if, you know, it, maybe for one or two dashboards, it's not a big deal, but if you're thinking about it over this, you know, over a really large organization, that becomes a lot of CPU cycles and a lot of resources. Um, well, we've got your back on this one. Tableau Server now actually keeps track of how often something's been visited. And if nobody visits it for 30 days, which that's just actually the default, that's actually settable, we'll actually suspend the extract. And then if somebody comes back to it, we'll start actually, we'll actually resume cycling. Um, admins can adjust either, um, th this is actually a per site feature and you can actually adjust it from either the site settings page or via the REST API. Tableau prep, and for, for those of you who haven't uh, gotten your hands on Tableau prep, uh, it is really a powerful and amazing tool for data mashing, right? mashing up data and it's come a long long ways in uh, in the last year and a half two years since we released it uh, but perhaps the number one requested feature for prep was the the ability to write back to or to write to external databases now we're starting small we've got this uh, what six data sources um, really powerful data sources these this is kind of the big core uh, data sources um, but uh, I would expect this list to grow over time. Um, but hopefully this is there to help help you right now um, and certainly off into the future. Another thing that dropped in uh, for those of you who are using uh, the data management suite uh, is the ability to group external assets. So 
oftentimes what this basically means is that um, users might be connecting, different users uh, in the organization might be connecting to the same database using different host names. So somebody might have, you know, a, a host name that's test and somebody else has test.test .test or something like that, right? They might be connecting through an IP address versus a, a host name or something along those lines. This feature actually allows admins to come in and um, and group duplicate data sources manually, so that you can actually, so that you can actually have a little cleaner lineage and a little cleaner look back at your data sources. Um, so that's you know again one of those ways to help extend the power of things like data management and being able to keep track of uh, all of your assets. For Tableau Online users. Um, Anyone who needs to connect to an on-premise data source would have to have used uh, Tableau Bridge. The good news is that we've rewritten it from the ground up as an enterprise class application. It's powerful and it's scalable, and uh, there's a ton of features in there designed to help uh, big, uh, big enterprises be able to manage their data effectively um, with a minimum, again, a minimum sort of fuss around that. Again, doesn't demo very well. So, um, and of course, there's a ton of other stuff, right? That that first list kind of looked short, right? Um, we're always working with uh, data partners to build and improve the connector. So a lot of that is just what you're seeing on this screen. There are little tweaks to things like the uh, the JavaScript API and the metadata API. Um, this is just kind of how we roll, right? Um, we're always looking for ways to make the experience of using Tableau more delightful. And yeah, there's another page. Uh, the mobile app, of course, gets some updates. Um, the mobile app actually is updated on about once a month, so keep an eye on that. Um, hopefully, it'll be important again once we can go back out into the world, right? Um, and then finally, just a couple more, right? Um, I'm actually pretty excited about time zone settings because I'm really terrible at time zone math. Although I believe here on the West Coast, I'm in what, GMT minus eight or something like that. So no more having to subtract eight from whatever things are. You can set the time zones uh, per site, which is awesome. Um, okay, so are we ready to uh, play with the toys a little bit here? Let's do that. We'll go to that the demo screen, right? Okay, so let's do this. Pop over um, to Tableau Desktop. So we were talking about spatial files. I wanted to just show you a little bit about what that looks like. So if we connect to a spatial file, let's go all the way back out here. I should have navigated to this earlier. Shape file. So what I've got is a list of shape files here. And all we need to do is connect to one. And then there we go. Come on, little buddy. Okay, so there's there's the first one. Um, if we wanted to actually union these other two along with this, and what we've got here is actually hurricane data, which will be really fun in just a second here. Uh, this is from 2016 over a couple of days. If I wanted to union these, uh, by the way, don't do the noodle, do the union. If you can see that kind of underneath there, it'll actually union these files, which is great. This is a way to do it in a in sort of a static mode. I'll just have those for three files. You can update this union so that, so if, if you imagine a scenario where these shape files are gonna be, be deposited on some cadence and you just want the data to kind of update as it goes, Instead of doing a manual uh, a manual identification of these, you can actually do wildcard. You can uh, set it to kind of whatever you know whatever name patterns you're looking for uh, to match things like that, and then pretty much click OK and you're done, right? Uh, I'm going to actually pop back over here and I have a completed version of this where I've tweaked a couple of things and added some. Uh, added a couple of quick calculations here, but um, just to show you what this data file actually looks like, because it's pretty cool. Let's bring geometry out here, especially for people who aren't 
uh, aren't mapping people. I'm not particularly a mapping guy, but I love playing with shape files. So what, we, what you can see here is effectively, effectively this, this is a single mark. And now we're going to break it down by the point ID. And you'll notice that we go from one mark to 20,000 of these things. And these are individual recordings over a course of time and a couple, you know, and, and geographies uh, around the world. Um, you can see kind of the spaces. So let's do this and we'll take the wind speed. I'm going to make this an average wind speed. And, oh, you know what we should do? We should turn the borders off. There we go, that's a little cleaner. So we're still, we still have all 20,000 marks. Let's break this down just a little bit. And I'll show you this because um, the pages shelf is one of those things. It's been in Tableau for longer than I've been at Tableau, but we've always avoided talking about it because it didn't really do anything in Tableau server. Uh, as of 2020.1, I think it's actually now available in server. So I'll show it to you just because it's cool for, animating things like this. I'm going to go ahead. This is going to be at the day. Actually, let's do this at the hour level. Perfect. OK, so now what we've got, you'll notice this little control shows up over here. This is the speed control. You can either step through it manually with these buttons, or you can use the play button. And now you'll actually see the storms as they sort of move through the Pacific. You can see that we've got the, the date stamp up here. Um, you can play this on a loop if you want as well, which is pretty cool. But that's it's a really it's a really I, I encourage you to actually as a complete aside from 2020.3, I encourage you to actually try that out in some of the things that you're doing on Tableau Server because I think you'll find that users find that uh, really useful to see to be able to see kind of the progression of data. So there's that. Uh, now, we were talking about join calculations. Let's, again, kind of pop over here. I'm going to edit this data source. And what we're getting at here, so I've got this date dimension field. And what, what we want to do is actually bring this in and connect it to, let's see if I can get that over there. Come on, little buddy. Uh-oh. My data source is broken. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's try it this way. Hmm. That's not what I was hoping for. Well, we'll come back to that one. Um, not sure what's going on with that. The calculation, let's edit, let's see if we can edit the existing one here. Because again, I did kind of the the, uh, let's see, so what's it looking for here? I thought I had this all set up. Sorry, guys. Do this. Oops. Okay, let's see. Uh, so the date dimension. Anyway, what 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 should happen here is that I've got this date dimension table, um, and what we're doing with this. See if I can pop that up. Yeah, it's not going to let me. There we go. Okay, so what what we're doing here, if you look at the kind of, you can kind of see the data structure behind this. Um, is we've got so we're joining so we've got an order date do we've got the this is actually superstore but if you've got um we've got order date and ship date and what we're trying to do is figure out um what's the you know what what's shipped at any given time and we're trying to build a join here between this date dimension table that's got year month and date so we're using a make date calculation and we're doing a greater than or equal to the order date and less than or equal to the ship date is basically what this should look like. And then if I hit the back button a couple of times, we should be able to actually at least see what the end result ended up looking like. There we go. 
Okay, well, that one didn't work quite the way I would have hoped it would, but um, hopefully you kind of get the idea. We saw the saw that. Well, well, if I have time at the end, I'll I'll uh, back up and kind of walk walk through that again. Um, parameter actions, though, this is what we were actually talking about, and I wanted to kind of show you uh, show you through this. So what we've got here is, in this case, the United States, and you'll notice that we're using a parameter action that changes the reference line to kind of whatever um, whatever I've selected. So we can select on any record. We've got Haiti selected right now, but if I deselect, it just sort of stays where it is. And um, that's probably fine, but I think for, uh, for a, a dashboard author who wants to have a little bit more control, you'd like to be able to like specify what happens when people deselect. So what we've done here is in the actions dialog box, down here, it's clearing the selection will set value to 81, which in this case happens to equal the United States. So like any action, the first time you do something like this, um, you need to basically invoke it once in order to do it. But if watch what happens when I deselect Trinidad and Tobago, it now pops to the default and I can select any one of these other marks and it'll just move on, right? Always pops back to, uh, to the default that I as the author specified. So pretty cool. Um, let's continue to talk a little bit about that predictive modeling. So we've had trend lines, forecasting, things like that for a long time. Um, kind of all hiding over here in the analytics tab for those of you who haven't seen it. And just looking at this scatter plot, what you're seeing is the average life expectancy of females uh, over the per capita health, health expenditure. Um, and you can see that it's a pretty reasonably expected sort of trend, right? You kind of just see that just the, the trend's pretty obvious. Um, so uh, what we've done with that, that, that same, the, the empirical engine that I was mentioning earlier is that we've actually, uh, we're actually using that to expose the, uh, some, of the, some more of this predictive power uh, in the form of a simple calculation. And in this case, these are by the way, treated as table calculations. So they'll, you, you kind of see that behavior here in a second here. But what it looks like again, in this case, just kind of in English, we're actually trying to predict the life and the average life expectancy based on the per capita health expense. And so basically what this looks like is that anything, uh, anything at about 0 0.05 are likely to be true to the model. Now, on this worksheet, we've used a diverging color palette uh, to sort of highlight the results of this function. Um, note also though that the prediction is just one independent variable in this case. Uh, you can actually, th there's, there's, there's actually not a limitation about that. Uh, you can add as many as you kind of need here. Uh, certainly I would encourage you to be, you know, kind of uh, reasonable about that, but uh, you, can, uh, you can stack those in there and have, you know, four, five, six predictors as you saw in the example in PowerPoint. Um, in addition to that, we've got the quartile function here. So let's let's pop into one of these here. So what I'm saying in this one is um, show me the you know the 90% upper bound. So this is kind of like treating it like confidence intervals. So I've got one for 0.9, uh, so 90%. Another one at 0.1, so 10%. So we're kind of seeing how true that is to the model. And then you'll notice that if I hover over one, you'll actually, uh, I've got this nicely formatted tooltip, uh, but you can actually see uh, you know, see the thresholds that, you, that we're working with for any given one of these marks. So again, pretty darn powerful. So with that, let's actually do another, let's go, um, let's actually go ahead and connect to Tableau Server and talk a little bit about that the uh, the data management quality warning is popping in here. So I'm already signed into a server, and this is the for those of you who haven't connected to public to publish data sources before. Once you've signed into a server and then you click you click this Tableau server button, you'll get a list of things, and you can already see 
both data quality warnings and whether or not it's a certified data source, things like that. Now, in this case, I know that I've been recommended to find data source one by a friend. And you can see that the owner is Nina Ballas here, but I see a quality warning here. And if I click on it, you can actually see uh, that it was a suspicious source owner used with caution. Uh, it's flagged as under maintenance. Um, you can set other types of warnings here, but it's all just surfaced right here in Tableau, uh, in Tableau Desktop. So if I connect to it, if I connect to it, there we go. Awesome. I can pop over to a new worksheet. You'll notice that even in the desktop interface, it actually still shows the data quality warning here uh, and recommends that you go to Tableau Server, um, which, well, what the heck, let's do it. Let's pop over here and we can actually, this is actually where the data quality warning warnings show up for those of you who um, who got data, who either need some data management help or um, have data, have uh, already have the data management warning or data management uh, suite. Um, this is just a quick look at that. But while we're here on Tableau Server, let's go ahead and talk about that um, that subscription, uh, that the the new subscription capabilities here. So if we pop here, subscriptions. Just right here on the bottom of the dialog, we've actually changed it so you can set either the schedule, which it's currently set at uh, once a week, to when the data refreshes. And then if I hit subscribe here, anytime, uh, anytime this the anytime the the extract refreshes, this will pop up. And in this case, this is actually allowing me to monitor uh, workbooks on a different Tableau server. Funny enough. Um, so we can actually keep an eye on uh, the popularity of, of those workbooks. So I'm going to not do that, but let's go ahead and talk just a little bit about, so if I pop, this is actually one of my favorite features of recent Tableau server, but the, the idea that you can kind of expand and contract this to get more, more space. Um, the shared with me button is this little guy over here. So if I click on that, you can see that I actually shared this workbook with myself just an hour ago. Um, but this will actually act as an archive so that, again, you don't have to go digging through your email to try and track down that thing that your boss shared with you a couple of weeks ago, right? Um, really, really powerful stuff. Um, and just trying to make it easy for people to surface content and uh, just, you know, in this day and age when stuff is coming at you so fast, this is a really helpful thing, I think. One quick look for those of you who are Tableau prep users. Um, for those of you who aren't, this is what a prep flow looks like. This is Tableau prep builder. And since its inception, we've been able to uh, output to uh, Tableau data extracts to publish to uh, Tableau server, to output to CSV, things like that. Well, as of 2020.3, we've added the ability to output to a database. Now, I'm already connected to this database. Uh, and this is actually, I think, Postgres. You have the choice to either create a new table, to append data to an existing table, or to replace data in an existing table. And that's pretty much it. If I hit Run Flow, we'll go ahead and log me into the data source and Let's see if it does it. Maybe. Might have logged me out of this already. I think it's not that big. Oh, we'll give it a couple more seconds here. Well, you get the idea. You know, <laughs> you know that it would actually write to a database. So. We'll go ahead and uh, you'll have to take my word for it on that one. Um, but basically, I mean, this is, again, this is just trying to extend your analytic capabilities. And then when you've created something that is production ready, you can actually put it in a place of record, right? Into an actual data warehouse and have it land where other people can then get at it pretty easily. So 
there's that. So let's pop back over PowerPoint for a second. So shifting gears a little bit, um, I love Tableau Conference. This was uh, actually Tableau Conference number 10 for me. Uh, I love the energy and I love the kind of the vision, uh, the data and the abject nerdiness of keynotes like Devs on Stage or Iron Viz. Um, I particularly love customer presentations, you know, where you can see um, where you can see what people are actually doing with Tableau uh, out in the world, um, you know, and what good it's doing in public organizations. Uh, and of course, I love Data Night Out as well. Uh, so with the whole world pretty well on lockdown this year, uh, in-person events like Tableau Conference uh, were getting canceled all over the place. And, you know, I've just got to say our, our the, the team that runs Tableau Conference absolutely crushed it in a really short turnaround. Uh, they, they actually pivoted from this massive 15, 20,000 person in-person event in Las Vegas to an entirely online event with the same high quality presentations and all reimagined for this sort of digital format. Um, if you didn't have a chance to attend a few weeks ago, um, or if you missed some of the content, it's all recorded. Uh, it's down in the lower left, left corner of the screen here. It's tc20.tableau.com. And what I wanted to do is actually show you around just a little bit. So kind of the main page here, um, you've actually got a couple of, couple of main links at the bottom here. Um, I think the more important place to go is sort of what to watch. If you've signed into this, you'll actually be able to do a watch list. I'll, I'll come back to that in just a second. But notice that you've got uh, things like, uh, you know, you've got roles. Uh, so things that are targeted specifically at analysts, data leaders, IT, things like that. There are, by the way, 308 total recordings on this. Um, category, you've got some financial service targeted things, healthcare, life sciences. Uh, public sector, enterprise, um, topics, there's tons. This is where you can like really get into the in, into some of this stuff. Um, you know, analytic skills, there's tons of that. That's one of the one of the main focuses of Tableau is like teaching each other how to use Tableau better and to do more creative and more clever things with it. Um, dashboard design, things like that. Uh, and of course, a ton of IT focused content as well. So um, in addition to this sort of thing, oh, the other thing I wanted to call out actually is this episode type, because uh, there's some really good stuff in here. Um, the Tableau Unplugged in particular, I found really interesting. You've got these, con these are more conversations, less demo-y kinds of things, but more about things like building a data culture. Um, the analytics for, ev for everyone, this is a great talk. A couple of my friends are actually participating in this, um, just talking about, uh, how to make analytics a little more ubiquitous. Um, in addition to that, there's of course the search bar up here. So you could type in, you know, like mobile. I'm, I, um, I'm a fan of mobile, so I can, let's actually reset that because I think I selected something. So if I select mobile, you can actually see that there's uh, become a Tableau mobile and metrics Jedi. Employ, deploying at scale, things like that. So there's a ton of good just kind of right here. And, uh, you know, like I say, once you've built a watch list, you'll actually, if you save these things, you can actually come back and just watch them um, kind of on your own time. So there's a good one here about uh, kind of using Hyper, our new data engine. Or not really that new anymore now that I think about it. Uh, <laughs> but using Hyper to, um, to help extend your reach into uh, into big data. There's of course Iron Viz, which I watched live, but I'm gonna come back and watch it again. Speed tipping, another really great thing for getting quick little tips and hits about uh, how to use Tableau better. The roadmap sessions, there, there are of course the keynotes, right? There's, uh, there's the roadmap, which is uh, Francois, uh, where's devs in, uh, the one that I'm missing on my list here is uh, uh, devs in desks, which is devs on stage done uh, for a uh, an entirely online event. 
anyway, I highly recommend you check those out um, and just kind of, I, I encourage you to explore them because it's really, it's some, it's some really great content um, and I think you'll find it really useful uh, in kind of extending your own knowledge of Tableau and just kind of the wider analytics community. In addition to that, there is also this connect area here where, where you can come in here. Um, as you scroll down, you'll see things like joining the Tableau community. There is the swag store. Um, I would tell you that the uh, the swag store is great. There's a lot of really cool stuff. The um, data rockstar masks are severely back ordered. So um, get on the list now. Hopefully I'll have mine by you know January or so. Um, and then this beyond TC, there's, again, there's more really great content over here. Um, this is, of course, the survey. Um, Tableau Public Viz Gallery. This is where sort of art meets analytics. There's some really powerful stuff. Um, there's, uh, it's, it's really clever, creative ways of using Tableau. Um, sometimes it's just the overall dashboard design. Some of it is like really clever use of Tableau, like this, whatever this uh, this meteorites chart there. And the nice thing is that you can actually, if you get them on, if you get to Tableau Public, most of the content that you can see on Tableau Public, if you see something, you can actually download it and deconstruct it and teach yourself a little bit more. So that's powerful. Tableau Foundation. Uh, there's of course the Tableau COVID-19 Data Hub accessible from here. Uh, Tableau Blueprint, which is a guide for helping uh, enterprises and large organizations just roll out Tableau in a way that will help them scale, help them grow, and help them do better with their own data. So uh, I encourage you again to, um, to dive in and have a look around, enjoy some of the content, and uh, that is what I've got. So um, thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate it. Um, if you'd like, I can go back and take a quick swing. What do you think, Steve? Should I take a swing at the uh, at the um, the join calculation again? Yeah, give it a shot. Okay, let's see what happens. I'm gonna do it from scratch though. So let's see here. So that file is. That's the problem is I don't have everything in the same folder. <laughs> where is that? Okay, I got to figure out where that file is first. Are there any questions that came up that are are uh, that, that that we need to address? Uh, let me take a quick look here. Let's figure out where. If I go here, I can actually see what the file was supposed to be. Oh, here's one. Um, is there a way to subscribe based on the ETL table update? I need the email when the table update is completed. It's not a fixed time every day. So I don't know. Is there, we don't do us. Uh, we don't have our subscriptions. Yes. Ba subscriptions based on um, data refresh. Correct? No. Correct, yes. Uh, I think the way you would probably go at that just at a high level would be uh, if you could actually, if you, if you can monitor that ETL job from whatever tool is doing the ETL or someplace else and trigger and uh, trigger a REST API call to fire the extended, fire the, uh, to fire the, was a subscription, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hey, Eric Scott. Yeah. That's exactly what I just uh, replied. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, many customers have done this for quite some time, actually, before we had more capability to trigger extracts. Mm -hmm. And so there's certainly no reason why that won't still work. Okay, excellent. Great, and I do have a question, and I don't know, I haven't heard of this, but okay. somebody asked, like, how do we connect to HubSpot from Tableau? But I don't, um, I don't know what HubSpot is. My guess would be if we can't connect, if we don't have a native connector, which I don't think we do because I've never heard of it, um, uh, then we probably could either use the um, um, 
you know, it really depends on on HubSpot itself. If if they have a ODBC connector, we can leverage that. If they have an API. Yeah, then you can, can do a web data connector. Web data connector, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I think I've got this figured out now a little bit. Uh, so we've got the date dimension, which, as you can see, is a is three numeric columns: month, day, year. Um, I'm going to join this. Come on, there we go. So we're going to do a join calculation here. Um, we get to show off the uh, the power of autocomplete, which I love. Um, okay, so we're going to create a join calculation where we do make date, and then year, month, day, and then smart people, copy. So what we're going to do in this case is so uh, there's my join calculation, and then we're going to do date, uh, do order date, and then we're going to actually make the join calculation uh, greater than or equal to. A little laggy today, and then we'll do the same thing. So we're going to do, come on, got to close that. There we go. And we'll do a new one, new relationship calculation. And then we'll do less than or equal to the ship date. Not that exciting, but you know, not bad. There we go. I just hate not, not having that. So now you can actually see that we've done the join. And then if we pop back over here, uh, the finished data source is actually this one. We've built a quick little date calculation here uh, where we've made the date again. And now we can actually do the count of order IDs. Well, that's not quite what I wanted. Let's get rid of that. How long have I been doing this, Steve? You said <laughs> nine years. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's just do it by that. Anyway, evidence really just mostly just pointing out that we've actually created that join calculation. Uh, I've used now a date dimension, a, a new date dimension that I built off of one table from a sync from one data source, and uh, then visualize that visualize data from the other data source. Uh, over time. So there you go. Great. Any other questions we can get at? Well, I just got one. <clears throat> so excuse me. Is there a promotion tool to move the dashboards from dev to QA to prod? And the yes. answer to that is absolutely. <laughs> we have a we have a uh, a feature called the content migration tool that is part of our uh, server management add-on, if you have Tableau Server, it's just a, a little uh, extension to that that will give you uh, many, many features, including re our resource monitoring tool to monitor your overall health of Tableau Server, as well as the content migration tool that will not only allow you just to move content like a dashboard from server to server or site to site or even folder to folder, project to project, uh, but you can also transform that um, throughout the process. So um, uh, you could uh, have QA going against a, or a dev version of the, of the dashboard going against a dev version of your database. Mm -hmm. And when you migrate or promote it up, you can, you can also transform it to now point to your production database. So it's a very, very powerful tool. Um, and, uh, that is, let's see, the content migration tool came about in 2019.3. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> the least we both remember the same thing. So we're either both right or both wrong. It's yes. Yeah, I would um, say it's either 2019.3 or 2020.1 is when yeah, that was uh, like that. a full. So, yeah, um, yeah. you should be good, uh, with the content migration tool there. If you, and if you want to. Uh, try it out and see it. We do offer um, 
little uh, hands-on workshops for both uh, for our server management add-on. Um, so just be on the lookout or send me an email, smartinez at tableau.com. I'll put that in the chat here for everybody. If you're interested in a uh, in a kind of a harbor tour of of our server management tool, including the content migration tool and how it works, you'll actually be able to get your hands on it and use it for yourself. Um, so just send me an email and we can invite you the next one. We try to do those uh, the probably the, around usually around the first week of every month. Um, yeah. And let's see if I have anything else. I think that is pretty much it. All right. Well, again, thank you everyone for your attention. Is there well, thanks so much, Eric. Oh, I do have one question for you. Yes. Um, all the great Tableau conference-ish stuff that's out there, mm -hmm. we usually those usually persist for quite some time, you know, so they're not going to be going away anytime soon. Um, but uh, just for reference, like if we if we were considering like looking at content from TC19, mm -hmm. um, those that's still out there in the wild yeah. as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I believe that's on our. YouTube channel, just the Tableau software YouTube channel. Is that correct? That is correct. And in fact, if you go that far, then then you can find my talks. Oh man, yeah. Of everybody wants that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, I don't know how long the content will reside with uh, within this TC ish, the TC twenty dot Tableau dot com, but if it ever moves away from that, it will still reside on our Tableau software YouTube channel, and you can go. As Eric mentioned, many years back to see uh, some great presentations from from the Tableau community there. The the TC nineteen site for sure was up as recently as like a week ago. All right, so yeah, so, that's, that's still alive. Okay. Perfect. Great. Well, thanks so much, Eric. This was a great update, and of course, uh, this this uh, presentation is almost out of date because. We are expecting a brand new version of Tableau coming here in the next yep. couple of weeks. Um, so uh, be sure to uh, tune in next time we do uh, another product update and, and you'll hear all about the great stuff that's coming in 2020.4 and beyond. So thanks so much for your time, Eric and everybody. Hopefully you found this helpful and we'll see you next month at our next Tableau Tuesday. Thank right, you. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.